Paul, tell us where we are. Ah, we're on the under the 15th Avenue Bower Bridge, the Baskill Bridge, about which this week's feature is uh, concerned. And uh, we're sitting underneath the bridge, and the noise above it is lovely, isn't it? The the, the percussion of the of the traffic and over the bridge at rush hour. Yes, is it? It is hour. just about rush hour. I yes, remember a friend of mine, Fred Bauer, an artist, who did a recording under a bridge and made an actual audio tape out of it, which was wonderful. You could do that with this, these sounds, but we're not going to do that. We're going to go through some images that Gene has put on his uh, little portable computer so that I can have reference, and we'll go through uh, looking at them one after another as it relates to this bridge, practically all of them. image we're looking at, I mean, after we look at the principal image, is uh, unique in the sense that it shows the first rails to get to Ballard. It didn't have to do with trolleys. It had to do with the Seattle Lakeshore and Eastern Railway and this very he heavy uh, timber trestle for gathering logs and the like. And it got through here first in... Um, 1987. So that's when this was just a little farming community. It was hardly anything here. Maybe 1887. You mean did to I say. say 1987? You did. You did. But what's a hundred years between friends? <laughs> yeah. Would you could make a correction of that? Maybe write down. Uh, I could. 1887. Or I could. It's so much easier for me just to correct you right here in person. Could I say? Could you say Paul meant to say 1887? Well, I could, and I'll do that if you really want me to. Could you do all three things? I can do all three. All right. Yeah. It's redundant, but go ahead. Well, we show this because it's unique. I haven't really figured out yet where this is, except that it is in Ballard. It even says it's in Ballard on, on the picture itself. But going forward, this picture, the next picture, was one that I considered for this week, but chose it, gave it second place and chose the one we used instead. This one looks north through the early construction on the bridge, and I think all that mess and that contraption that all, all that engineering in the foreground is where they're building the bascule foundation, the pier. Can you see that? Yeah. Yeah, behind me there. But it's looking north even as I'm looking north here. And if you look at the, look at the buildings on the right there, those twin tin buildings and, and the, the drying, uh, the stacks for the lumber mills, we can see them in other pictures too, maybe eventually. Oh, and there's the steeple for St. Uh, Alfonso's on 15th Avenue. It's a very complex picture. It takes a lot of time to go and examine it in detail. We don't have time to do that. We're going to move on. Oh, there, there. See, uh, to the right of that pier, the pier we just pointed out from some elevated position looking north. Here we are under the south pier looking at the north pier. And the bascules themselves are not in yet. And some of those structures, including the burn tower, and the, t the tinnish kind of building on the right appear in the picture that we just saw, which was that one right there. Well, I'm looking at it, you are, and I suppose you are too. But anyway, that's how I found it. And uh, here is a picture looking uh, through that so same opening and on the same day, which is April 24th, 1917. Uh, look at this lovely picture from a little while later. This is September 14th, 1917. It shows they have the bascules in, that is the, the teeter-totter in. There's the wooden trestle that leads up to it from the, from the south side. We can pair that again to that. So the, they're building the pier right there. We've already done that. We'll come back to it. Okay. Here we are looking up 15th Avenue in 1921, after the bridge has been built. But there's very little action 
uh, we notice in the far distance we see the Saint Alfonso. Uh, he's not actually a saint. No, he is a saint. No, he was a he was a 17th century theologian from Naples who took an interest in the slums. Huh. Interesting guy. I think we might have a picture of him. The railroad tracks you see in the foreground, they lead to the bridge. But it wasn't until six years after that that any trolleys went up the street. It was all freight cars that went up it. The trolleys still went up 14th to the right. There's Irving, uh, Irving School on the right, too. Ah, here, there's Alfonso's. It says, the angels at bat. This is an article I wrote about the Alfonso's girls' school. Uh-huh. And I had a great time doing this article. But <laughs> just read it. It'll be in the blog. Okay. There's St. Alfonso. Look at him. In Naples. Right. He did a lot of sort of sentimental homilies. This is a very early look across from Queen Anne to Ballard. And that bridge there is the Great Northern Bridge. It made a big curve and it went along the Ballard uh, waterfront. There you see it again, cutting across another uh, another view from Queen Anne and the curving Ballard Bridge of the Great Northern Railroad. And to the right is the 14th Avenue Bridge, which was for both the trolley lines and for the wagons. And what a mess it was. Look at what a what a collected uh, uh, assemblage it is. And, by the way, those bridges you can see in the principal shot that's from this week. You know, you can see them. So we're, that's why we're putting them in here. It makes sense, doesn't it? And here is another one, yet another one. This is done from 14th up on the hill. So you're looking pretty much on the far right and in line with 14th. You see what a tremendous uh, smoky mess is the single capital of the world across Salmon Bay. Uh, there's the uh, 1908 based real estate map which shows you the same alignment of the bridge on 14th, the curving Great Northern Bridge to the left of it, and the various mills uh, to the west of there along the, nor the, the north shore of Salmon Bay or, or in Ballard proper. Ah. One could say more. See, there you see him again. The 14th Avenue Bridge on the right, and the curvy Great Northern Bridge on the left, and then the farrago of uh, burning towers for various mills on the far shore, and even on this shore. Paul. Yeah. Now, I hate to interrupt, but this is getting tedious. No, no, no. It's no, it's it's delightful. Isn't I'm it learning tedious? a lot. Oh. No, I I just have to protest your your use of the word farrago. I've heard it maybe four or five times. I like the word. I will continue to use it. Did I use it four or five times yeah. today? No, no. This well, is the first time today. Well, then why can't I use it once today? Okay, go ahead. Farrago, 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 farrago. There, go five go times. Go ahead. In your face. Okay. Oh, look at that. There is, there, there's the Ballard skyline. Looking across Salmon Bay from where Fisher's Tournament, Fisherman's Terminal is now on the south side of the bay. That's the Seattle Shingle Mill. And those towers are nearly 50 feet high. How do I know that? Because of this. I took that guy's approximate measurement of the guy standing there. You see the guy standing there? Yeah. Yeah. All right. If you measure him in about a, let's say he's a shorty, at five feet and a half, let's say. And they were shorter than Gene. Yes, they I were. They were a foot shorter than you are. Well, they still are, right? Then, the, then this is about uh, about 45 feet tall, this stack. You know, four or five stories tall. Wow. Your camera going to be okay? It's fine. I'm just putting the little covering All over right. it. Because yeah. we are getting spat upon. Yeah. There we go. Let's see, I'm just oh, still look at rolling. That. Go ahead. This is looking from the bridge west with the Seattle Singer on the shingle on Seattle Cedar on the right and then the chitin and locks in the distance. And before they could raise the water in 1916 behind the locks when they were ready to do it, they had to go out and protect the various structures that were in the bay. And here they are measuring uh, with a ruler, so to speak, next to the tower, showing how high the water is going to go, the nine feet higher than it is at the time they took the measurement. I've got a collection of negatives that are all throughout 
Salmon Bay with this, these guys walking around with uh, with their ruler, their big ruler, their ah. foot ruler. There you see it. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. How wet is the computer getting? Not terribly. Wet. Oh, okay. no. Well, I don't know what a what a computer can put up with. <laughs> <laughs> it, I don't know if it's rain or it's my slob. No, that's that's it's a little bit of both, but yeah. there's rain on there, I can see. Yeah, well, we could go somewhere else. Okay, so I'll bet the sound is a lot better in here. You know, we I were, like the sound of this noise on top of the roof and the falling rain, huh. and your complaints regarding Farrago. All of that was a symphony to me, in a sense, or at least kind of obiture of complaint and, and overheard sounds. Well, we're, we're just, we're only about 20 feet from where we were, but... Well, we're close. I so we're still in the spirit of the Ballard Bridge. We are. Right. We're right underneath it, actually. Once opened in 1917, it was possible then to, to become the foundation, the, the, the way to get to Ballard uh, for the city's new municipal trolley which was owned by the city. And here we have uh, the special running with all sorts of dignitaries of that trolley stopping on the bridge to take a photograph in 1918. This particular picture, I think, is the first story I did on Ballard, I think. This is long ago. It's like 30 years ago. And it's taken looking with a bridge on the right with its still wood approaches. And there you see the Seattle uh, Cedar Mill on the left with its big burning stack and its tall piles of cedar. And also the Bolcom Mill, I believe. Or maybe that's the Phoenix Mill up ahead, the one we saw earlier as well in the alternative shot that we considered, remember? Mm -hmm. uh, the oh, yeah. one we saw a while ago? This is, I love this shot, really. Because there are, there's the pier, one of the piers for the for for the Port of Seattle's Fisherman's Wharf. Oh boy, don't you just love it, Gene? Here here we are, kind of midlife, uh, on the wooden approaches to the Basco Bridge, and actually there's a sign on the Basco Bridge that says "Welcome to Ballard." Hmm. Uh, this got rough very soon, as you can see. The trolley went right down the middle of it, and in, in about so. Uh, Mm, 22 years or three after they opened the bridge, they replaced the timber approaches with, uh, uh, with uh, uh, concrete ones. This particular shot, which is from 21, this is you know, about uh, 19 years before that, shows us 15th Avenue, which is now this tremendously busy, very busy 15th Avenue above us at the north end of the bridge with hardly anything on it in 1921. There's the bridge uh, in the mid to late 30s before they would take out the wooden approaches and add the concrete approaches. And I think there's a chance, Gene, I called the city archives, and she is sending us a link to a YouTube that she constructed today of the ceremony for dedication for this new bridge, which you don't see it new here. You see it just before these tore down the timber approaches. They didn't tear down the center, which is the bascule with the piers, the right. concrete piers, which figure in the pictures that we, you know, are featuring this 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 week. But they, they did make a big celebration. It's in, and it's in vibrant technicolor. So I think we're going to be able to link to that. Okay. Wow. Is that what, permissible, Gene? Sure. What year is that? 1940 was the dedication. And they shot it in color. In color, yeah. That's yeah. when color really got sort of popular. Yeah. And it was color that actually survived. The Technicolor was a, a, a color that was going to last. There were other colors done at that time which have just faded.
here they are a year before in 39 tearing out the trolley rails because they weren't going to put in the new approaches mm-hmm. and put trolleys on them they were going to go with the rubber buses or the or the trolleys that you know were trackless and uh, so that's what they're doing here is tearing out the trolleys now isn't there a isn't there a, a political conspiracy <laughs> Boy, that's a big story. I know it is. Yeah. I think you should just just mention it, just for a second. Just tell us. Okay, the masters of rubber and internal combustion, uh-huh. capitalists like uh, B.F. Goodrich, General Motors and the like, they conspired to get rid of trolleys. That's proven. There's a marvelous uh, film documentary on that done about 20 years ago. And one of the towns they hit was Seattle. You know, they preached this uh, gospel of the gospel of internal combustion and rubber. Right? right. They didn't manage to pull it off totally in San Francisco, interestingly, and so it continues to have some of its trolleys. Here's a picture that looks uh, from this is here's a now for you to repeat, Gene. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> what would you have to do for this one? You'd have to oh, get boy. on the uh, that other the first Bascule Bridge was built by the Great Northern Railroad yeah. when they were constructing the the um, Chittenden Locks. You'd have to ride that Bascule up to the top. They'd have to tie you onto it. Wow! Would you be willing to do that? As long as the rope is sturdy. Hear that? I knew he would. Well, again, this looks east. You can see Seattle shingles, the burning tower, it's a tall smokestack, and you can also see the Baskill Bridge. And this is quite an early shot of the Chittenden Locks. Yeah, very lovely. There is Mr. Chittenden himself, the, the uh, Army Corps Admiral or Colonel or whatever he was. He was a, a brilliant historian. He wrote one of the great histories of the Western expansion. I, actually, I want to apologize for how I just rambled on and on through that. I'll try to be better next time. Okay, well. Okay. Is that it? You, Are we done? Can, I think so. I mean, it's just a bunch of pictures showing you uh, variations on the theme of the Ballard Bridge. You've seen a lot of them. Uh, every one of those pictures can be elaborated on, but I didn't do it because I wanted to keep it short. Plus, yeah. you're going to have that f- footage of uh, the dedication of the, of the Ballard Bridge's new concrete approaches, 1940, in full color. That should be enough. That would be wonderful. And plus, I think there is on that YouTube... Uh, some footage that are actually building the bridge, the right. new approaches. So uh, mer- uh, they're, they're supposed to be quite sensational. I remember it as wonderful from 30 years ago when I first saw it. Marvelous. Okay. And in color. All right, it's beautiful light. Did you see that light? I did. You know, on the, can you turn your camera? And I'm show going it? to. I was going to. I was going to do a, a little uh, shot around. Look at this light here because yeah. it's just so lovely. Yeah, that steel yeah. gray sky with a bright afternoon, I, late afternoon light. I bet there's a striking. rainbow somewhere. Yeah, it could be a rainbow. Take I see it, it. There is a rainbow right there. Oh, you're right. Yes. Oh, it's coming on.